الحمد لله الذي أنزل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعل له عوجا قيما لينذر بأسا شديدا من لدنه ويبشر المؤمنين ويبشر المؤمنين الذين يعملون الصالحات أن لهم أجرا حسنا ما كفين فيه أبدا وينذر الذين قالوا اتخذ الله ولدا ما لهم به من علم ولا لآبائهم كبرت كلمة تخرج من أفواههم إن يقولون إلا كذبا فلعلك باخع نفسك على آثارهم إن لم يؤمنوا بهذا الحديث أسفا إنا جعلنا ما على الأرض زينة لها لنبلوهم أيهم أحسن عملا وإنا لجاعلون ما عليها صعيدا جرزا أم حسبت أن أصحاب الكهف والرقيم كانوا من آياتنا عجبا إذ أوى الفتية إلى الكهف فقالوا ربنا آتنا من لدنك رحمة وهيئ لنا من أمرنا رشدا فضربنا على آذانهم في الكهف سنين عددا ثم بعثناهم لنعلم أي الحزبين أحصى لما لبثوا أمدا نحن نقص عليك نبأهم بالحق إنهم فتية آمنوا بربهم وزدناهم هدى وربطنا على قلوبهم إذ قاموا فقالوا ربنا رب السماوات والأرض لن ندعو من دونه إلها لقد قلنا إذا شططا هؤلاء قومنا اتخذوا من دونه آلهة لولا يأتون عليهم بسلطان بين فمن أظلم ممن افترى على الله كذبا وإذ اعتزلتموهم وما يعبدون إلا الله فأقوا إلى الكهف ينشر لكم وإذ اعتزلتموهم وما يعبدون إلا الله فأقوا إلى الكهف ينشر لكم ربكم من رحمته ويهيئ لكم من أمركم مرفقا وترى الشمس إذا طلعت تزاور عن كهفهم ذات اليمين وإذا غربت تقرضهم ذات الشمال وهم في فجوة من ذلك من آيات الله من يهد الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وتحسبهم أيقاظا وهم رقود 
ونقلبهم ذات اليمين وذات الشمال وكلبهم باسط ذراعيه بالوصيد لو اطلعت عليهم لوليت منهم فرارا ولملئت منهم رعبا So thank you, everybody joining. Um, last week, we talked about breaking out of the, the boundaries that we all put our lives in. And we noticed we had to think outside of the box to connect those four lines. And if you put nine dots together and you want to connect them all, the only way to connect them is to think outside the box. Islam is here to shatter the box. What keeps us away in the book we're reading with Simon Sinek about the why, he talks about how it's not that somebody has better willpower than you. It's the same. It's the environments that we put ourselves in that destroys our willpower, that we lose it. It's a losing battle. Uh, just yesterday, the students were, we do uh, the prayer for the middle school, high school, and I speak to them the same way I speak to you. And then elementary comes in. And um, as the elementary students come in, the third grade will come in, the fourth grade will come in, the fifth grade will come in, and then the second grade will come in last. When the second grade comes in, they're usually the rowdiest. So I told them yesterday, I said, okay, let's change the environment. Nobody speak. Everybody just stare at this point and nobody move. Guess what happened to the second graders when they walked in? They were like, they thought something was wrong. So they were scared to make what? A sound. And they all came quietly. And it left such a profound impact on the other grade saying, wow, we impacted their behavior by our behavior changing. And when our behavior changed, their behavior changed. What is society telling us? Let their behavior change, and then who will change? We will. And Islam says, no. Allah says, come towards me, then I'll come towards you. That's why you have to follow the Sharia. Sharia is step one. Follow the do's and don'ts. Figure out why. We're going to be focusing on that. And let's remove the manipulation that we're all living under. On a sad note, I've been trying to watch less Instagram posts, but I, I'm trying not to cry now. I mean, just recently, a lady, they all have white flags. And the one's with her son, and they, I think it was yesterday or today, and the Palestinians were walking with white flags. And just to scare the rest of them, they shot one of the women. She was holding a white flag in one hand, and what on the other hand? The child. And the child is just standing. It's hard to feel joy when we're amongst a genocide. And sadly, we still have, I mean, the little that we could do, you have to do the protest. You have to not go to Starbucks and all, any other places. Don't go. We still see few Muslims are still going. They're saying it's not going to make a difference. It is. There's one lady whose daughter died and this Christian lady was watching her. She smiled. She says, this daughter isn't mine. It's Allah's. She came from Allah. She's going back to Allah. She was so curious. She says, I have kids. What is it about their faith that has this power? And then there's so many people. One of the most read books right now is the Holy Quran. They're, they're interested. Like, How do people have such faith that all they keep talking about is God? And that's what we're going to be focusing on today. So how do we strengthen our faith? Inshallah, we'll go over it. Yesterday, uh oh. Just, Salah ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. 
Share at least one point that I shared so far with you and how it's impacted you. Go ahead. I just got to fix the audio. Bismillah. Bismillah. Okay. Bismillah. Yesterday, we said last week, I'm saying, we talked about what gave me peace is if you transgress against Allah, Allah will destroy you. Not even in the next world, in this world. And we talked about the people of Thamud, the people of Ud, and now the people that we're currently. Our leaders are saying, it's not a matter of if the Zionists get destroyed, it's a matter of when. And Islam says you don't have fear. People come, or come spy, come do things against you. There's no fear. You rely on Allah. The only time you should have fear is are you obeying Allah? Not are you obeying the dunya? Unfortunately, we have a negative fear of us obeying the dunya and we're scared to stop obeying it for people might attack us or we may lose status. But alhamdulillah, it's one positive thing that's happening with this genocide is the world is waking up. And sometimes for the world to wake up, you need a wake up call. And we received a huge wake up call. So how do you know you're part of the transgressors? Allah says continues, we talked last week, whenever a human being is tested by their Lord, they say, oh, God has blessed me. Oh, I got married, I got a job. But as soon as God tests you, we ask the question, why? Well, it must be because God humiliated me. I don't like my Lord anymore. If you look at most atheists, why have they become atheists? Most atheists, Hassanin, who's main founder of the school, is somebody in the debate circle. They've gone against the top atheists in the country. And he realized each one of them was angry. They realized their mom died from cancer, or they were molested, or something bad happened. They said, why would an all good God, Christian God, allow this to happen. Thus, there can't be a God. And that's what he was debating. So Allah talks about it. When he tests them with limiting their provisions, something bad happens, my Lord has undeservedly humiliated me. When God tests you, because he's going to test you with your wealth, with your family, with something. Why? Because this world is transient. Nothing is yours. We're going to be talking about that today. How do you get that? We're going to use wudu. To get there. Shaitan's working hard. I gotta make it cooler in here. Salala Muhammad Ali Muhammad. If you could talk to the person next to you, what does this verse mean to you? And how did you behave the last time something didn't go your way? Somebody cut you off, the waitress made you mad, it made you mad. Okay. Sorry for the interruptions. Okay. So you guys realize everything happens for a reason, but you have to decide what the reason is. Is it because you feel cursed and the universe and Allah is conspiring against you? Or is everything conspiring for you? When 9-11 happened, do you know how many people complained that their taxi didn't come? How many people complained that they had to call off work because their mom was sick? How many people complained that they couldn't go to work because they had to go do, they had a flat tire? And after the buildings fell, did those same people complain of what happened about them? No. Those setbacks saved their lives. And if you realize that everything is a mercy, all your setbacks, but it's, you have to decide what is the meaning to give things. The most important quality we have for each other is love. Well, it's even almost just as equal 
is when things are going your way, you behave well. How do you behave and what thoughts do you have when things don't go your way? That's what makes the Palestinian movement so strong, that they're smiling at the camera and they're telling everybody, stop even videotaping. We don't need your tears. What are you going to do and how are you going to answer the day of judgment on the day that this genocide happened? What did you do about it? Did you stay silent? We have no love for this world. Their faith is so strong. They have a why. They have a purpose. So we're going to be going after chapter two. Are we either being manipulated or are we inspired? Were you inspired to wake up? Did you wake up excited? The same way you wake up excited when your parents told you you're going to a theme park or you're going to Florida or on a vacation. Did you wake up excited? Because depending on how you wake up three, four days consecutively will pretty much determine how you're going to wake up for the next 30 years because that's your habit. And in, in this country, many people don't wake up, especially after the age of 35, excited. Then why would I want to take advice from people who are not happy with their achievements? They're not smiling. and They're not excited about life. I don't want that. And that's one thing that from a young age. There's somebody even in this audience. I mentored him about five years ago. I said, wow, you are inspired from this world. It's put you, and he's going to give a testimonial one day. I said, you need to break this box that you live in. And stop telling, allowing society to dictate what you do. You have a gift from God. And I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to hear from you until you have at least $500,000 in your bank where you've generated revenue because that's the side effect of this gift. But you have to get rid of the negative friends. And you got to get rid of the bad habits and you got to do, do decisions that are loving for yourself. Me and Hajj Hassanin, well, years after that, were at AB's Amazing Rib. Awesome place. And we're sitting and he, the brother comes, he taps me on the shoulder. He says, hey, guess what happened? You said not to contact you until I have 500K. Well, I've exceeded that. How? He realized that he put all the attention on who? On himself and Allah. And when he did that, Allah showed him opportunities. He's willing to making sure that he doesn't put himself in environments that challenge his willpower. If you have an environment or a habit of watching haram, don't take your room in the bed. Whatever it is, make sure you're setting yourself up for success. So manipulation produces in society quick sales and even sometimes repeat customers but not true loyalty. Look at Marshalls and TJ Maxx. How do they manipulate you? Anybody know? Clearance, the price tag. What about the price tag? Everything in the store is on sale. You ever notice? What's the regular price? $100. What's their price? $20. Have they manipulated you? And then you're looking at it and you're buying a bunch of stuff at Marshall's. You went in for one thing. What are they hoping that you do? You buy like what? Eight things. And how many things did you need? One. Do they get you every time? Yeah. Your master's at manipulating you. Still, okay. So what I want you to do is I want you, everybody know the last two numbers of the Social Security? If you don't, you just pick any number. But I want you to pick the last two. I want you to think of a number. I'm going to give you two things. Everybody have the last two? Like my wife's number is 56. Okay? So $56. So if it's $56, whatever your number is, make that your dollar amount. Make sense? Okay. Your, if yours was $56 or whatever your amount is, if I were to give you a keyboard, would you pay less or more? For her, it would be $56. And if it's less or more for the keyboard, how much less, how much more? You got? Everybody got a number? How much you would pay for a keyboard? Okay. Everybody have it? Sam, what would you pay? I'm like, <laughs> go ahead, Sam. For your keyboard. It's a regular keyboard. Okay. What would you pay? 10 Okay, what would you pay? 25? What would you pay? Yeah. 25. All right. What was the last four of your the last two of your shows? 
Huh? 74. And what was the last two of your social? 66. What was the last two? 19. Did ha did the last two of your social had anything to do with you putting a price tag on it? Because when they did it to the MIT students, the students enjoyed the class exercise because they did it with keyboards, they did it with mouses and other things. But when I asked them if they felt that the writing down the last two digits of their social security number has influenced their final bids, they quickly dismissed the suggestion and said, no way, right? It's like when they do the puzzle test and they tell people a bunch of words of patience and then they go test their patient at the next group, they notice that they have patients that last up to 10 minutes. Then the other people take a crossword puzzle of mean words like hurry up, anxiousness, anger. And then they went and test their patients to see how long it would take to interrupt the person that they're waiting for. On average, it was four minutes. And then if you ask them, did the crossword puzzle have anything to do with your patients? What did they all say? No. So how many things are manipulating your subconscious that you don't realize? That's what today's about. So they took products like cordless trackballs, cordless keyboards, designer books, chocolates. You notice people with the last two of social was 955. Higher numbers, they paid almost two to three hundred percent more. So did they get influenced? Yes or no? Do all the major companies know how to influence you in this way? Why do you think you're paying a thousand dollars for an iPhone or car payments? Do you really need four cars in your driveway? A society or certain thing, merchandise, everything that you buy, you most likely don't need it and you've been manipulated to buy it. This is how this country run, runs. We're consumed with consumerism. Does everybody agree? Okay. What's bigger? This? Which one looks bigger? This one. Are they the same size? Yes. Why does this one look bigger than that one? And why does that one look bigger? So that I, did you get manipulated? Can you get manipulated depending on the surroundings? So depending on your surroundings, you have to be careful of how you put yourself in certain surroundings. Because you could get really manipulated thinking you're too big or you're too small. But the whole time Allah says you're just enough. Hang out with a bunch of people that say are wealthy people and you have 10 bucks in your pocket and you're thinking that's where happiness is, but you truly don't know them. You've been manipulated thinking this is what I have to do. Subscription. So a dot com subscription is $59. A print and web subscription where you could have the print and the web is $125. What did most people buy? The first one or the second one? First or second? Raise your hand if you think it's the first. Raise your hand if you think it's the second. Okay, most of you think it's the first. It is. 68 bought, again, this was done at Harvard, MIT, you know. And the majority bought the first one, 32. How can we manipulate somebody to buy this one? Want to raise the price of? Raise the price of the first one? Huh? Put a sale. You had a third option. So let's see. $59 for the first, $125. We've added this option. Third option is still the same. Should this have any effect from these sales? It's the same thing. Should it affect? Yes or no? It shouldn't, but does it? Are we very predictable as human beings? But are we very irrational? That's why there's an amazing book called Predictably Irrational. We're predictable, but we do some stupid, irrational things when we don't ask a fundamental question. What's the fundamental question you should do whenever you're buying or doing anything? Why? Why am I doing this right now? Imagine before you get angry at somebody, you ask the question, why did I speak back in a non-loving manner? 
And that's how muhakaba happens. Somebody who's spiritually wafering towards Allah. They're constantly questioning themselves, making sure that nothing takes them away from Allah. And most people think that's too hard. because That's the program you were given. Look at this. First one, 16. Second, zero. Third. Does Best Buy know how to do this? Does Target know how to do this? Most of the places that you go are very skilled at selling things. So manipulation leads to transactions, not loyalty. It's the norm in our society. They manipulate you to buy things. There's not much loyalty. Due to many marketing sales taxes, consumers are overwhelmed by choices leading to paralysis. These strategies also stress employees constantly have to come up. Look at every public company. How do they keep making money? How does the Apple, they're all under so much stress. And now when you put under stress, and if it means they have to manipulate you, maybe even give you some toxic food that's harmful because it saves a dollar. Has consumerism and companies showed that they're willing to poison you to do that? Have they been sued billions of dollars? Yes. Um, Pfizer, how much Pfizer has been sued for? Hundreds of billions of dollars. Why? Because it's about what? and their shareholders. So this result, a lose-lose situation, lack of lasting loyalty for companies, and societal harm throughout consumer confusion and stress. This is one of the reasons why we have so many health issues in our country. That's not what this lecture is about, but you can directly correlate it to our day-to-day -day living. Colgate, what's Colgate? In the 70s, before the 70s, the number one company. Then they had competition. How many Col Colgates could you buy in like 1970. It's like one, two. How many Colgates now are there? 32. Why do they have 32 different brands of Colgate? Why? Because when the competition started, they had to show different brands to market. But have more people brushed their teeth since 1970? No, it's the same. So ever notice how many different brands of Colgate or toothpastes, you ever go into Target, you get confused, so many brands. Why is that the case? How does this apply to you? What are things that you buy that you feel the pressure, that you feel like you have to buy it, or people will be unhappy with you, your kids, your spouse? Talk to them as one way that you're consumed by consumerism, because everybody here is, especially me. I have three gym memberships. Why should I have three gym? How many do I use? One if I'm lucky, right? Think about it. All of us are motivated. We get manipulated to go sign up. But do we have the habits to quit, to keep going? No. Talk to the person next to you. What's one way you've been manipulated? Go ahead. Where's Dania? I'll turn it up. No. It's a fuse. All right. Who would like to share? Who's brave enough to share publicly how you've been? Sal. Huh? What, what about it? Well, you dress, your clothes. Think about it. Would you buy a BMW if you didn't have the symbol on it? Would you buy a $300 pair of Jordans if the Jordan symbol wasn't on it? But it's the same shoe. I give you the same exact shoe. I put the Jordan symbol on one that's 300, or I take the Jordan symbol out and I give it to you for three dollars. Which one would you wear? You're buying the symbol. Who else would like to share how they're consumed? Yes. iPhone, Samsung. We're gonna be talking about it. What made iPhone so innovative? that it gets people, it wasn't. In some cases, it was not the first. What was it about them that they were so much different than others? All right, the emojis. Yes, cameras, okay. 
We'll talk about that. We're going to talk about that. It wasn't. There's a great movie you guys should watch. It's Blackberry. The movie is called Blackberry. Blackberry, everybody had, they had, they were the dominant. You could see their self-destruction. A lot to do with greed. It, has, it applies a lot to the principles in our own life. Okay. So now there's a golden circle. Why, how, and what? This is what Simon Sinek talks about. What is the most important out of the three? Why? Well, when you were a kid and you went to your parents and said, Mom, why should I wear hijab? Why should I pray? Why should I believe in God? What were you told? This good. Sit. Yes or no? But what's the most important thing to our faith? Why? When, when Zachariah or when our prophets were told, you're going to have a baby of old age and your wife is barren, they would ask, how? Why? You sure? They ask questions. In Islam, it encourages you to ask questions. Well, what were most of us told, especially first-generation parents that had so much stress, and when we started asking questions, what were we told? We were dismissed. Do it, or you're going where? Hell. Imagine your father coming to you and saying, if you don't listen to me, I'm going to throw you to hell or I'm going to slap you in the face every day. Isn't that the way we were portrayed God? But your father would never do that to you. He's not going to tell you, I'll open up an oven and say, I'm going to throw you in there. And if he did, that means you're going to have some severe mental problems that you're going to need counseling for for a very long time. Right? But we do that with God. So, first, what? The outside circle. Every single company or organization on the planet knows what they do. You know what they do, you do. You know how to drive. You know how to pray. You know how to fast. You know all these things. You know what to do. You, know, you may not know how, but you know what to do when it comes to religion. You all agree? You know what to do. The Quran says it. If you don't know what to do, you read the Quran. It tells you what to do. Promote good, forbid evil. Live a God-conscious life. That's what you should do. Do the Sharia. Figure out what the Sharia is. That's what you do. If you choose not to do it, not learning how, well, that's the second group. Some people don't know, don't know how they do what they do. They don't know how, but they know the what. Do we all agree as Muslims? Everybody knows what. Some people don't know how. Majority of youth don't pray. The majority of Muslims, every Muslim will tell you, yeah, we all need to pray. Do majority of them know how to pray? Does Forts and Dearborn High Cross with teaching kids how to pray? So prayer class? No. And if parents don't pray, the likelihood of them praying is very low. Why? Very few people or companies can clearly articulate why do they do what they do. When I say why, I don't mean to make money. That's the result. But why, I mean, what is your purpose, cause, or belief? Why does your company exist? Why do you get out of bed every morning? Why should anyone care? Talk to the person next to you. Just tell them, why do you get out of the bed every morning? Because how you articulate that will depend on your happiness. Why do you get up? Are you manipulated to get up? Yes, some of you are manipulated. Okay. Who would like to share? Why do you get up every morning? Go ahead. Because of? You're grateful and you're driven. Right? You have a greater purpose than yourself that you want to help others, and it makes you excited about it. There's a person I asked today. I said, what was your greatest driver? He says, what, what really drove me is that whenever my mom calls me and needs money, I've achieved such success that I don't ever have to tell her no. Because that's a life worth living. Don't you agree? Yes. That's what we teach our kids at Wise. I said, grow up to a state. One of the only ways you could repay your mom is if she ever reaches poverty, that you remove that poverty. That's in a small way, if any, way you could ever try to repay your mom. Live a life of success. In America, being broke is a decision you decided to make. 
you have no excuse. It's never easier to become successful. Now, how do we define success? That's a separate discussion. I'm not talking about money in your bank account. So people don't buy what you do. They buy how you do it. Do you agree? Your relationships are not what somebody does for you, but why are they doing it? Somebody randomly calls you and says, let's go out to eat my treat. And this person has never done that for you. What are you going to ask to yourself? Why? Or if you're on the supermarket and somebody just comes and taps you on the shoulder, what's the first thing you're going to do? Say what? Why? What does this person want? And then you get scared and you realize, oh, he just gave me my wallet because I dropped it. So many things run through our mind, and usually our why when it comes to other people are very negative. I've done studies. If you do, if everyone hides, uh, a Muslim lady walks by in the street and your doors are unlocked and you're in the red light, right? And the door's unlocked. Is that lady going to lock her doors if she sees an older lady walking by? No. But if you see a black guy, are you going to lock your doors? Yeah. Why? What's the difference? What if you see an Arab guy or a Muslim guy? You notice we are manipulated in so many ways and it's all driven by fear. Think about life insurance. Don't, want, don't you want your family? I remember when they tried to sell me an alarm system. Don't you want, what if God forbid something happens? You didn't buy this thousand dollar alarm system. All driven on fear. And on small things, it's okay. They'll tell people, this is your brain and then they'll boil an egg or they'll uh, uh, fry an egg, this is your brain on drugs. Any questions? Fear. That's okay, right? And there's other methods of fear. But in most times, we're manipulated in fear to get for you to buy something to drive the pockets of consumerism. Think about when you buy new merchandise, brand new, and people want you to buy a three-year warranty. Why would I need a $100 warranty on an item that's brand new? All sales driven, and what do they do? They put the fear of God in you to get you to buy things. And then they tell you, well, your neighbor did it, and 60 other percent of the people did it. What if they're idiots? How do I know that they were right? So, how do we break that mold? We make great computers. So, think of Apple. Why you buy Apple or other, other places? We make great computers. Is that focusing on why, how, or what? The first sentence. Which one? We make great computers. Is that what, how, or why? What? What do they make? Computers. They are beautifully designed, simple to use, and user-friendly. Want to buy one? Okay. So now, look at the way this other company sells. Everything we do, we believe in challenging the status quo. We believe in thinking differently the way thinking differently. What is that focusing on? The why, the how, or the what? Which one? Why? Why are you doing this? Everything we do, we believe in challenging the status quo. How? The way we challenge the status quo is by making our products beautifully designed, simple to use, and user-friendly. And we happen to make great computers. So what came last? The what? What came first here? Most companies focus here. The what first? Apple, what do they focus on first? The why. Want to buy one? And they get you. Watch this. The multi-gigabyte portable hard drive. MP3 player. Music player was actually invented by Creative Technology. Two years before iPad had the technology. Okay, you want to see the way they market it? Does anybody even know what creative technology is? Anybody in here? It's the company that puts speakers in computers. They were the top. They much better iPod, much better than the Apple iPod. If you compared the two, it wasn't even close. And they were two years ahead. This was their marketing scheme. You ready? Marketed their product as a five gigabyte mega MP3 player. It didn't sell too much. How do you think Apple sold? So now Apple has the same device. What do they got to focus on? The why, the what, or the how? The why. 
So now you're Steve Jobs. This is why he's brilliant. This is how are we going to get people to buy? How, what would be your sales pitch to get people to buy this? Let's take some guesses. Who wants to try to do a sales pitch? I'm trying to sell. You have the AirPod, the Apple. Uh, generate demand. How did he generate demand? How did he market? Ah, close. What did the device do for you? Before, you had to have a record player, right? Or a Walkman. How many songs did it allow you to put in the pocket? 10,000, right? Or 1,000 in the beginning. This is how they market it. 1,000 songs in your pocket. That was it. Because did anybody, anybody else buy anything else after that? No, eventually that company gave up. Other companies too. Dell, Dell created a small electronic. Couldn't work. Why? They didn't focus on the why. Uh, flat panel screens for monitors or computers, they went into the TV screen. The best. They didn't focus on the why. Same with your life. If you don't focus on why with yourself or your kids of why you do what you do when you do it, you will eventually lose somewhere. And your why has to be established every day with everything that you do. And if you don't, then you're gonna, you might get manipulated to keep doing something that you don't want to do. Sometimes I'll tell people, I said, you don't like your job. You have these up opportunities. Quit your job. Why are they scared to quit your job? Lose everything out of fear. But it doesn't make you happy. Why you live in a job that makes you miserable? Quit. Find something better. Look for different opportunities. But what has society told us? Especially people who live paycheck to paycheck. 60% of Americans, if not more, live paycheck to paycheck. How hard is it to make a decision now when you're living paycheck to paycheck? Most Americans are in debt. In the 50s, there was no debt. What's the average American in debt right now? Minimum $15,000 in credit card debt. Why? What are they buying? The difference is creative told us what their product was. Apple told us why we needed it. Do you tell your kid or your spouse what you want, or do you tell them you take the time and tell them why you want to do this? Like I, that's what I do with my kids. My, my daughter wanted a pair of Uggs, right? I said, okay. Why do you want them? Dad, I'm really comfortable. Okay, so she got sucked in. One of her friends had them probably. I said, okay, no problem. How are you going to get them? You tell me, Dad. All right, so I always have a deal with my kids. Read. Readers are leaders. Can you read for three days and give me a summary? And I gave her an Islamic book. And man, these summaries were the most detailed summaries ever. So whenever your kids are consumed or do want things like that, anybody from that angle that you have some leverage over, use it as an opportunity for them to grow. Now, unfortunately, I have to buy your 160 pair of Uggs. <laughs> Relationships. If you were to take a relationship test right here, with because you have to ask yourself, is it, I want you to think of somebody who's who's you see every day that's a little bit negative. Your kids, your husband, your wife, somebody that your relationship could be a little bit better, right? And then it's the ninety day rule. So from them to you, so you are grading the way they treat you. Everybody, we're all together on that. So you, some of the kids, you do it with your parents. Communication and openness. Zero being very sad, six being great. Give that person a score. We got it? Everybody got it? Because we're going to have to add them up. All right? Me and my wife did this earlier. I got yelled at. Resolving, resolving conflicts. Zero to a six. Zero, zero being very decided. Remember, that person towards you. De degree of affection caring, zero to six. Add them up. Intimacy and closeness, zero to six, if it's a spouse. Overall satisfaction, zero to six. Did we all do it? 
Okay, everybody have a number. And please do not raise your hand because you're, you're going to be put on the spot. So unless you want unless you're brave enough. How many, if anybody out of a possible 30 rated that person under a 10, are you brave enough to raise your hand and talk about it? And can you do it now? Under a 10, under a 15, who is brave enough? You don't have to share who it is. You could just share, yeah, I have somebody in my life who's a 10. Come on. 60% divorces in the community. How many of the 40% are happy, right? Who would like to raise their hand? I'm not going to make it too bad. Okay, under 20. Okay. What's your name? Fatima. So you have somebody in your life under 20, right? They're under 10. Okay. So Fatima, from being communication and openness, what did they rate them? A zero. So now that means whatever you tell them, they don't respond back. But how are you towards them from a zero to a six? End up a zero. How about resolving conflicts? Okay, how about you towards them? Did you guys notice? How did she justify her being a zero and one? Because of what? Because they are. What's the, that's why there's sometimes really bad counseling. Well, he mistreated you. Yep, that's right. Don't let him take advantage of you. What if you gave that person an excuse? The reason why they're a zero or a one is because they're in a lot of pain. Something to do with their childhood. Something that they went through. Right, Fatima? Sound familiar? Okay, so then you say, well, I'm not going to allow their pain to bring out my pain. So I'm going to be a six for 90 days, irrespective of how they treat me. Do you think you have the willpower to do that? Yeah. What would happen most likely? What would most likely happen? That person will what? Change. When we talk about that. So what we're going to do, we're going to see it in real life happen. Pay attention. This happened in real life. I had a lot of um, conflict about what I should do, what I should believe. And I don't want to be in the situation to have to go home and say to my daughter, that is uh, me and my wife had a big fight. So I, mean, I spoke to my daughter when my daughter's five and a half years old. She said, oh, I wish you got it. I said, oh, I wish you'd see it. I look really good with you. And then I said, oh, I wish you'd see it. Just me, I've been really busy. I want to do it, I want to but we don't have that many. We've got a lot of different things in value and that we're very interested in. What was going to happen when we got it? After I get Zoom? No. What's changed? I'm working even harder than that. You know, really in the mornings to, to late nights. I've got out of interest as well, which she doesn't like. You know, so, but, but you could be there, but you could be there. Yeah. And she could be there. Yeah. What instrument do you play? Guitar. Tell me what it feels like. Play the guitar. Play the guitar. What did you just like? This is like, yeah, it's astonishing. It's great. It's just like being a girl. Like being a girl. And you hold your wife. That's what you're going to do. What do you think the chances of doing a band are? No, no, no. We had a fight about that about a year ago. It was a case of you will do something about it or else. I'm going to compromise. And what was that problem? That I was a little bit poorly. She's saying, here's something that makes him feel like a god. The maximum you could be done by the street that's about. By the way, I love you. And she wouldn't say it that way, I'm sure, because what she's saying is you're not here with the kids, you're not here with me, you're not here with the kids, you're not here with me. She has a different perspective. Fair enough. I want you to see his name with one of You love your wife? Why'd you pause? 
um, question. The reason this question is because he's not fulfilled there. So I don't want to fulfill how I love her. And she doesn't want me to be completely fulfilled how I love her. I don't want to believe I love her because I'm trapped. I don't want to fall off of her. I have to life. If I ask Andrea to score a meal for me, how significant does he make you feel? Let's do that. I want to switch hats. You're in her body. Now I'm going to ask you, Andrea, tell me about meal over there. How significant does he make you feel? You know, when he leaves. When it comes on, it's the band more important than you are. You know that I hate that rock music and anyway. It's right. Does he love you? Yeah. 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 Okay. You're thinking it yourself right now. How many ladies agree with the original? This is what you're doing. What variety does he bring home to you? Surprise, desires, playfulness, respect, serve you, and let you up. Good thing. Um, fine. How much are you guys growing together? No. Zero? Sure? Yeah. How much do you feel like he's trying to contribute to you? From your perspective, Andrea. Probably zero. So here's a man who wants to make sure nothing to you. On Zoom, it's in a picture of three in importance. On Zoom, it's in a picture of three in love. You know, you get a lot of variety, but you stick around at eight. What would you want to do to a meal you know, if you were her? Changing all day. What do you think about a man when they get rid of him? Are you the father of your own? Are you really going to just get rid of him? Is he the source of your security financial? Yes. Are you going to do him? He's the father of your daughter and he's the source of your survival. Are you going to do him? No. What are you going to do when you feel insignificant, unloved, and uncontributed to, and ungrown with? What are you going to do? Make him change your life. How are you going to do that? What tools do you have in your arsenal? I should say, unloved. How are you going to make him stay at home? Give him a healthy night. Everyone's made. What's the ultimate thing to say? It says it's spending more time at home and get a golf playing with her. Or? Or I'll leave. And take your daughter with me. Oh, and I'll keep your daughter. What's her nature? Not be frustrated with her when she feels herself, not when she's stressed. Nature. She's very creative in her own way. You know, she's she's it's a lot, she paints, she doesn't get often enough because she always says she's not good enough, even though you know the stuff you do is fantastic, I see up on the wall. You should sell this to the gallery, you should say that's the female world. We do that with each other. I guess you are. No, I'm not just too far. Oh no, you're no good, no, 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 I don't know, but she wants so much more. So you like that nature, that artistic nature. Does that appeal to that? I love it. In fact, isn't that part of your nature? If she follows, but she doesn't talk herself. No, she's begging for you to be a man and show her the others inside. She's begging for that. Goals are, her goals are too. No idea. I have no idea what that goes. Well, you can't leave. You have no clue. You've been too focused on yourself. You're really a good man. Right. Until you've gone and giving everything you have as a man to fill up those things of her attempts, you can't let go. Because you haven't done what's necessary and you know it. That's why you're on the fence. Because if you really did everything, you would have left because you're a smart man and you're a strong man. What does it take for her to feel loved? What is you feel her so much, she wants to get to you now. She says, honey, go to the band, go, go do it twice a week. But you won't know until you give completely and totally. No holes barred. That woman needs to be lit up. Even if she wasn't the right woman for you, 
The next 90 days should be the greatest 90 days of group life for you. And you never as a man get more attention and focus and care in the world. And you tell her after the 90 days, this is what I need to know. And we make this work. And you'll know the truth at that point. What's the point? First, fill her up, but you never fill up. This is fine. Give it a hand. Give it a hand. Give it a hand. Give it a hand. So <laughs> what? So what did it take? Who to change? Him. Right? Every married couple that's thinking about divorce, have them watch this video. Say just for 90 days, be the best version that you promised Allah. So what's the difference? There's a woman who's haram for you. You say a few words, she becomes halal. She was haram, forbidden. You could go to hell for it. You could be punished in Marizah for it. But then two minutes later, you could touch her. What's the difference? You say a few words, you could touch her. I accept. What's the difference? Allah, who's in the middle? Allah, now you're liable. Allah says, you put my name. That woman that's haram, I've made it halal for you. But on the condition that what? You be the best version of yourself, irrespective of how that person treats you. And thus, that was the gift of the Prophet. This is why he was so centered in Tawheed, nothing distracted him from that focus. So why do we start doing what we're doing in the first place? And what can we do to bring it out, cause our life to considering all opportunities available today? Focus on your why. Wake up and say, oh, that's what this world, that's why remembering death often is so important. It puts you in perspective of thinking, wait, before I touch this haram, will it compromise my barzakh? Will it compromise my day of judgment? Well, what does Allah say? Yep, there it is. If I behave this way and do that. Ah, now I have my why. I'm going to give one example. Wudu. To Allah, what are you washing the first part? You're what? Three. So the outer dimension is you're preparing for prayer. What's the one of the inner dimensions? Because Allah says to Allah belongs the east and the west. What does that mean? Everything. That chair, that shoe, that hat. It's not yours. So you think, like for instance, you go into a clothing shop, you see trousers, you see a sweater, you see a hat. But it's actually all thread. It's not a hat. That's an arbitrary name. It's not tr trousers. Because what happens when you take the, tr the thread out? You still have the thread, but the trousers are no longer trousers. What is it? It's just thread. So when you look at the moon, the star, the chairs, everything, your eyeballs, it's all Allah. Because Allah says, Allah belongs to the east and the west. Whatsoever you turn, there is the presence of Allah, the face of Allah. Allah is all pervading, all knowing. Everything. You look at the moon. How do you become an egoic person? Is when you look at the moon and you don't attribute Allah to that. You look at your success, that your boss, you really think in your boss paid you. You go to the doctor, you really think that the doctor healed you. Who do you first think in all situations? Allah. That's why before you eat, what do you say? Before you drive, what do you say? Everything is in the name of Allah. Everything is Allah's. So then, so when you're doing wudu, you say, oh Allah, allow me to see good. Allow me to stay away from haram. Don't allow these eyes to be used as haram. Don't allow me to look at your beautiness and not attribute it to you. Think about if you did wudu five times a day. And every time you did it, you say, Allah, show me opportunities that bring me closer to you. How much different your life would be. Because every day, every single day, God gives you opportunities to get closer to him. Everybody here had an opportunity. Somebody had an opportunity to allow somebody to cut in front of them. Somebody had the opportunity to buy somebody's coffee. 
Somebody had the opportunity to pick up garbage outside. Somebody had the opportunity to say patient when somebody was angry towards you. Somebody had the opportunity not to cheat. Somebody had the opportunity to pick up the phone and call the friend that they haven't spoken to. Every day, God is fulfilling your opportunities. And what happens is if you keep neglecting them, then Allah stops giving you opportunity. And you're going to confuse that for blessing. And you become cursed in this world and the next. Because this world, you have to keep striving towards Allah. But if your why isn't grounded, you're going to say, well, there's this person in front of me. I got 10 bucks in my pocket, but they need it. Well, I need to eat. But if you're grounded in your why that you're doing everything for Allah, you're willing to now go hungry in order for you to help somebody else. And that was the way of Ahl Bayt. Look at the Palestinians. They're giving, the UN has given them some water. The brother and sister won't drink it. They're running and rushing it to their mom or dad to drink it first. Kids are not even thinking about themselves. They haven't drank water for one or two days. You know, they're all going to die from disease, more from the bombs. They all have tapeworm right now. All the water that they're drinking is bad. But even then, the little that they're given, who do they think of? Look at that Tawheed, that you're around bombs and destruction. You don't allow that to live an egoic life where you only think about yourself. And when you live an egoic life and you're saying, why should I practice Islam? You don't know why you should follow the ways of Allah. You won't look at opportunities the same. Most of us will look at it as an opportunity, as a burden. What if right now somebody comes to me and says, I got a flat tire. I need you to come help me, but I live two hours away. How many people would moan and groan for that two hours if they drive, let alone go? What if Allah says that was the opportunity? That's why the most buried treasure in the world is not in Saudi-occupied Arabia, is not in Africa in the golden mines, or not in the oil, it's in cemeteries. When you're brought up, you should have became an actor, you should have became an artist, you should have became um, an architect, you should have built an orphanage. Well, why didn't you? Well, here's the reason why. Because remember that opportunity Allah gave you to help that person? He gave it to you 23 times. And each time you denied it and you gave yourself an excuse not to help that person. We do that with our relationships. That person's mad at me, angry at me. I'm going to be the same way. I'm going to be a zero just like him. And that's the life that we're living. That's why we have to break the mode of this community and say, no, every day is a chance for you to get closer to Allah. How? Through your actions. Watch this. It's only a few minutes. Sorry, it says you're twelve dollars short. Can I maybe try it again? Oh. This is a food stamps card. You know the card says thirty hours, so the total is forty two oh one. What's wrong? We didn't get enough free groceries this month. One in seven Americans apply for SNAP benefits. How many dollars? But the merits of the program ignite even the rates. A brush of color since past year is at the center of controversy tonight. Accused of making inflammatory comments to bomb and using Oregon's WIC program. WIC, right. similar to food stamps, is one of several federal assistance programs aimed at helping low income individuals and families. I really need all this. Do you know any of the comments? Look at me for more freaks. You're a lot of the grocery store, we can see this. Officers uh -huh. are being criticized for relying on government assistance using food stamps. He's twelve dollars short. But the cashier shows no sympathy or focus rather insulting. We confront the cashier, try to help out the customer, basically move along and find your own business. Is there a problem? My problem is that my partner's money is paying your grocery bill. We place our hidden cameras on the shelves at two fresh supermarkets. And this first woman is ready. And how many think she will completely ignore? All right, we'll see. Check out. Is this a business card? Oh, sorry, short $12 on here. By the way, she's. Yeah, 
my pocket. Do you think she'll go out? No, no. No? Okay, let's see. Yeah, well, how hard? She needs to have a job. I lost my job. I had to go to government assistance. There's nothing you can do. Yeah. She made the difference. Do you think it's okay? But she's using one. Yeah, that's right. Mind your business. What are you Did he help in bad times? Don't a lot of us use excuses why we shouldn't help people? Oh, I'm in a rush. Oh, I don't have it on me. Oh, something bad has happened. And Allah says, why are you giving excuses? I give it to you. The money, that $2 in your pocket is from Allah. Our problem is we put a limit on what Allah has given us, and we think it's very limited. Allah says, when you give and give and give, Allah will give you more. We don't believe in that. A lot of people. Who we mentioned earlier, except for the customer there offered to pay, he was denied by the cashier. No, she gets a free hand. She doesn't purchase the free. She doesn't really get supporting her. Albertsons issued a statement denouncing their cashier's reaction. And today, many customers are following suit. This woman calls out as despairing. I think people are taking advantage. You think she's gonna help? No, okay. <laughs> That's right. And this shopper can relate all too well. Are you sure? That's right. Thank you. Our scenario hits close to home for this. You know, notice most of these people said, I was once broke, I was once poor. Allah put them through difficult times so they could empathize and help people. My question, too, is if you didn't go through difficult times, you don't need to, to go and help these people. You don't need to get rock bottom, Allah saves, and then I'm going to help people. Do it in good times. No, that's not really. If you read a song, I didn't say. And uh, so, like, it's saving for a lot of people who are going through a lot of bad things. Excuse me, you could come just $12. I'm not Why are they blind? Why are they fuzzed out? 
Because they said what? No. How good was it when that black lady and that black guy gave that twelve dollars? How good did it make you feel watching that? Didn't we clap? Some people cry, right? Said, wow, we have hope in humanity. Most humans will help. That's why when the Imam returns soon, inshallah, majority, billions of people are gonna change instantly because they're already good. The fitra is good. It's very hard to go to hell. But why did they fuzz them out? Because they didn't help. What was the emotion they felt when they didn't help and they realized they're on camera? Embarrassed. That's the day of judgment. But the difference is you won't allow, your, your face won't be fuzzed out. It's going to be shown. And the angels are going to point at you. That was your opportunity here. That was your opportunity to forgive your mom. That was your opportunity to forgive your ex. That was your opportunity to help that person. Why, why, why did you allow yourself to be a victim? Why didn't you help these people? You're not a victim. You're a survivor who thrives to help people. Stop using excuses from the past to make decisions about your future. Otherwise, this will be your day of judgment. And if you're realizing you're not having been given too many opportunities to help people, that means there's something going on with you. When's the last time somebody called and said, I really need you? I really need your help. How many people depend on that phone call from you? When if you're, if you're parents, you go home. Do parents depend on you to make them smile, to make them happy? When you go home and your wife's had a long day, and you had a long day at work, but your wife, saw, or you had a great day at work, let's say, and your wife had a miserable day, are you talking about your great day? Even though she's at home? No. That's self-enlightenment. Self-enlightenment is when you know people are in need. But how do you get to that state? When you know why you're a Muslim. It's for that reason, for Tawheed. Not because you want to become a humanitarian, you want to do it for Allah. Because Allah is giving you that opportunity. And so much now, even now with the Palestinian movement, you see people who are trying to leverage it for their businesses sometimes. And that's also very sad. So there's problems. Our scholars are speaking up and saying, be careful. You're doing this for the wrong reasons. Your Akhita is really compromised. Because these are orphans. What I want you to do, is talk to the person next to you and say, what is it, why do you want to become a better believer? And what are the opportunities do you want Allah to give you to give back? Because on top of your list, to live a fulfilling life, you want to be able to contribute back to society. What is your why and how are you going to contribute, at least for this community, to make it better? Share with the person next to you. Go ahead. If you would like to join the WhatsApp group, it's here. I'd like to give feedback of today's presentation, but I don't want anybody to leave. We got something to do for one more minute. I'll give everybody a chance. Please, nobody leave. So it's going to be very quick. Okay, what we're going to do, it's a very, very, it's a self-reflective meditation by our fourth imam. Please, no phones, nothing. Just give, it, just give a second for yourself. This is for yourself. It's very short, very brief. Take a deep breath. Do five more of those.
Keep going. Five deep breaths. Keep going. Okay. Just open your heart, focus on your heart, breathe into your heart. Exhale, take any bad energy, exhale it out throughout your day. Now open your heart to Allah by these words of our beloved Imam. Close your eyes. Just take a minute. Don't allow the outside distractions affect you. Oh God, ya Allah, I'm held back from asking you because of three things that keeps us away from Allah. A rule you gave that I didn't follow quickly. Reflect and ask Allah, talk to Allah about a rule that He gave you that you don't follow quickly and how you're going to change. Make that promise. So Allah gives you opportunities. Ya Allah, I'm held back from asking you because of three things. Second, something you told me not to do, but I do it anyway. Make a promise to Allah that you no longer will do it. Make that promise to Allah. What is something you know you shouldn't do? Something you watch at night? Something, some way that you treat somebody? Um, action? self-harm, something that you do that harms yourself, your diet, what's something you know you shouldn't be doing, but you do it anyway? Make that promise to Allah to change, so Allah can change for you, your environment. Oh Allah, I'm held back from asking you because of these three things. And now the third. The blessings that you gave me in my life that I don't thank you enough for. How do you treat your parents? How do you treat your loved ones? How much do you thank Allah for the blessings they gave? How can you be more thankful? Talk to Allah. Ya Allah, I'm asking you to be kind and forgiving. Show me mercy. Forgive my mistakes. You are the most merciful, the most forgiving. Ask Allah for forgiveness. For any one specific for or for all of your sins. Ask Allah for forgiveness. Now, as a new believer, new promises come back. You could open your eyes. Salu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. It's all it takes. Even though there's distractions, that audio didn't work, it just takes you to reflect a little bit. Say, oh yeah, I'm doing that one thing. Allah says, when you change that one thing, watch how I change your environment for you reason why we don't do it is we don't believe in it. All I'm telling you, Robin says 90 days. All I'm telling you, do it for two weeks. Do one change. Say, Allah, I'm not going to do this haram action. I'm going to start being more grateful. I'm going to start treating better. Allah, show me a sign that it's working. Because I want to strengthen my faith towards you. And when you realize that everything is Allah, now you're solely dependent on Allah. You're no longer dependent on this body to make you happy. We have fell victim to this body and we're worshiping. The sad thing is, is when we die, the body rots. 
we, the shaitan looks at you and laughs and says, ha, that body has left you behind, this body that you worship. It's to the point where our scholars say, be careful. Don't do transplant. Let's say if you're doing organ donation after you die and you have an affinity to this world, it's going to be very painful. If you have an affinity to this body and you witness the organ donation in that body and it'll be the worst trauma you could happen in Barzakh. If you have a strong affinity in this body, some scholars say, do not, because you're so connected to this body. For our top scholars, our prophets and imams, there's no affinity. But how? Start changing little by little. How? Through habits. And start under asking the fundamental reason, why? Why did I come here today? What was the purpose? Why do I pray? Why do I treat? I just want to get closer to Allah. Because when you die, the only thing is going to matter is your closeness to Allah, nothing else. Everything else is an illusion. It's just thread. Did that little meditation make you feel a little bit better? Made you do it every day, a few minutes. And that's what our scholars teach us. In the morning, what's the best version? At night, how did I do? Where did I fall from grace? How did I treat my sister today? How, oh, I want to be a little bit better. Because everything that you have, Make sure you don't have the arrogance saying, I did that. I helped that person. It wasn't you. Allah did it. Remove the ego. And how do we remove the ego? By focusing on the why. And saying, Allah, now give me an opportunity in life to help people. Was it really cool to watch those people help at the supermarket? I mean, what if we were watching you? Would it feel even better? Yes or no? But do you have to put yourself in uncomfortable situations to do that? Yes or no? I'll end with this story. And then when? I, was, I, I used to do, inshallah, we'll start again for college students. The person that I recently did a podcast with, he came to this program. And every day, I, every week, I'd give them tough love. Because they would talk to me about girls and all these issues. i said, say, but this is where your life is going to head up. We would have weekly discussions. I gave this type of lecture looking for opportunities. The two brothers said, I wonder if Brother Hussein would do that. There was a person in need. Would Brother Hussein go out of his way and help that person? Because the two brothers, that was their first time at their lecture. They didn't know me. We end the lecture. We finish playing basketball. I go to Greenland. My wife calls me and says, can you buy mozzarella cheese from Greenland for uh, the lasagna? So it's just one big bag. I go it. And for some reason, I didn't go through the express lane. I went through this lane where this lady was filled with groceries. And I don't know why I'm waiting in this lane. Because I'm reflecting, why did I wait in that lane? So I get there. She puts her credit card through. It didn't go through. She put her EBT card didn't go through. And I'm like in a rush. So I said, I told the lady, shh. And I paid and I took off. She followed me outside because she figured out I paid knocking my door. She says, I don't want to. Let me give me your number. I said, Sadaka, okay. just pay it forward. So they're okay. So we paid it left. The next week, those two brothers came to me. Said, you know, we were questioning you. And we were questioning, we said, would you help? We ended up going to Greenland, and we were standing in the back, and we witnessed you helping this lady. And we were just asked Allah if this person would help, and Allah answered that prayer right there. And that was a profound moment for me. To the point of when you ask Allah, say Allah, is my heart pure? Give me an opportunity to show that I will help somebody. Get rid of this greed from me. Get rid of this negative emotions from me. And the only way to do it is you have to. You have to go through trials. You have to be given an opportunity. And if you fail, it's okay. You ask for forgiveness, Allah, give me another opportunity. I failed that one. I was mean today. I neglected today. Allah, give me another opportunity. Make sense? All right. Thank you, guys. Alhamdulillah. Inshallah, we'll continue to grow as a community. What time is it?